Hey guys, in this video I wanted to create some dark, quirky string music, like the mu music we uh, dissected in this Corner Office trailer. Let's dive in. Okay, here we are. Um, this music is brilliant and a lot of fun to do and often neglected for more obvious dark strings, but we want dark and quirky. Okay, so I've loaded up a few instruments, nothing crazy. Again, I like to do these off, you know, on the fly, because I kind of want you to see the process of sketching and creating. Um, I've loaded just two little drag and drop hits. I've got some clocks and some taps, some big drums, some pizzicato, Bartok pizzicato, 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 and a spiccato patch. That's all I've got at the moment. I might add more, but at this stage, I'm kind of just kind of showing you how to create the mood and the vibe of it. Now, one thing before we talk about the rest of this cue is obviously we're going to do, we're going to work through this. I'm not going to do the full one, two, three acts because often this track, these type of tracks aren't the full three acts. And also, um, I kind of just want to show you the, you know, I've, I've done the one, two, three acts before. You can see it in my courses, but I want to show you the important aspect of this type of music that makes it slightly different. And the important part is the stops and starts. Okay. Right. So there's space, there's space to breathe. It's like question, pause, answer, pause, question, pause, answer, pause. It's really important. So let's jump in. Now, I'm going to start this track off with a boom. I mean, why not? <laughs> because it's so nice. And I love this boom. I mean, you would have heard that in my videos, <laughs> just because it's like, boom, take that. Um, really subby in your face. It's going down type of boom. And this is obviously your more straightforward trailer hit. And I'm just going to keep it at two for now. And what I would like to do is I would like to create some atmosphere. Now, how far down? We're going to start there. Pizzica Bartok Pizzicato. And that's it. Now, those of you who don't know what Bartok Pizzicato is, it's a type of pizzicato that was kind of made famous by uh, a composer called Bella Bartok. And it's when the bass player kind of sla slaps the strings, pulls them and lets them snap onto the fingerboard. Uh, and it's really, really awesome. And it sounds amazing. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. I'm, that's just all I'm do right, doing right now is setting the tone. And now I've got clocks. I want clocks to keep the pace of this. It could be clocks. It could be ticks. It could be clicks. I'd probably stick away from clicks being the regular thing because you want them to almost be like a unnoticeable, just this, you're aware that time is passing type of thing. There we go. Just a simple little eight notes, I think, <laughs> pattern. Oh, oh, I'm consulting, there we go. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Sounding pretty good already. <laughs> Okay, now I talked about question and answer. Now let's let's deal with this here. Even in this early stage of the track, let's send that up an octave. So it, we've done the same thing, but it feels like it's progressing and it feels like it's an answer. It's like, oi, yeah, and that's it. Question and answer. That space as well is really important between the between the uh, the, the uh, bass parts. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just bring in an extra little uh, viola pizzicato part. I mean, I could start it there. I think I'll put it there, right at the start. And then it's going to double up. Okay, so far, so far, this is kind of like classic pulse type of stuff. 
Nothing too busy, nothing crazy. It's just giving you the sense that something's something ominous is going on. What we will do, however, is we're going to take that. I like that viola pizzicato. I'm going to duplicate that track. We want to create something a bit bonkers to give this some more space and give it this quirky feel. Um, and for this, I'm going to use one of my favourite reverbs, which is Sound Toys Little Plate. There you are. We want it to be nice and long. And there we go. That sounds pretty good, but what I'm going to do, I want this to be a bit quirky. So just a straight up pizzicato isn't going to work. So I'm going to pitch shift this down by a few cents just so it sounds out of tune. Oh, oh, it's you, cheeky monkey. Oh, actually, what what I could do, this would be quite fun. Let's see if this works. As you go. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to just change the mix a little bit more. I don't know whether you noticed. So what I've done is I've just, just changed the mix so that change the, the chain of the effects so that the pitch shifter is after the reverb. So the pitch shifter says, makes, uh, just takes the reverb signal, the signal after the original sound has gone into the reverb and pitch shifts that. And we want something like that. Maybe I'll, um, so I'm gonna latch this in. Uh, you can write this in, you can uh, touch this in, however you wanna do it. I like latching. Not really sure why. Just force of habit, I think. <laughs> and then read. Uh, that sounds cool. I like that a lot. Um, let's let's just take this one. And, oh, that one. I'm going to quantize and then make them all the same and see what that sounds like. Can you see that? One little thing. It, it kind of, it suddenly takes it into this like, huh? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> Who's done this? There's something unusual. Violin, pits. Burned. Just gonna bounce it into audio, and then I'm going to uh, oops, open that window properly and normalize, normalize that sucker. <laughs> yes. I mean that sounds pretty ace, right? I mean I'm pretty chuffed with that. Three, four, boosh. Right now, let's just chop that. Clean this up a little bit. Now, you might be thinking, okay, this is pretty straightforward, Rich. What else are you going to do? And what we need to do is bring in this little chappy, our hero. We need a little riff, a little fill to, be, to bring it into this bit here. So we're going to land on the beat so it's like I don't know what it would be yet dun 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 except I'll do that in time something like that That'll do. 
and it needs to be <laughs> sixteenths. Ding 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 ding. Da ding da ding. And I'm gonna add this in there. Da ding. No, that doesn't work. Let's put it in there. Dun dun, dun dun. Yeah, I'll just leave it like that actually. That was pretty good. Uh, do I duplicate it up an octave or down an octave? Let's have a listen. It does it needs that it needs that bendy pizzicato there as well, doesn't it? So, right, let's just give this a little bit of love. Um I love this Waves plugin. Uh, the CLA bass. <laughs> It sounds awesome on so many things. When it loads, <laughs> if it loads, Rich's computer is trying to die slowly. A bit too much. Cool. It's a bit severe, but I like it. And I'm going to add I'm going to duplicate this in here so that we don't lose the sense of that thing. Ding. What happens if I drop that down there? Not oh, much. Not really noticeable. And then here, it's the second time we're going to hear it. We want to reiterate it, but slightly different. Dun, 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 dun. Let's try that. And then this is where we go into the business, basically. Um, now, I'd like to introduce you to a really simple technique. I love doing this. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you in a second. That's the uh, Ferrum Super Snare Ensemble, which I really like. It sounds cool. Punchy. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce it in place. Boom. Uh, I want to unmute it because I want to still keep that hit there. And I'm going to normalize you and I'm going to put you into reverb. So what, sorry, I should tell you what I'm doing. I am creating my own suck back. Um, first thing, let's put it through. Let's get an EQ loaded up. Take out the low stuff. Let's take out the little plate for dinner. Longer. Okay, now I'm going to bounce that in place. There we go. Right now I'm going to reverse this little guy. And that's going to sit there. I might chop off the very end, just so I don't want the impact in place. A business. Yes. Okay. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, how do you, what do you do now? Um, the rest of the track's pretty straightforward, really, but let's talk about what we've done. We've done that kind of weird pizzicato thing to kind of give it a sense of, like, something ominous is happening. Question and answer. Some thing-keeping pace in the part of pizzicato. Reverse suck back thing my jiggy. And then here doom, 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 we want to bring in something new. I'm gonna keep this this uh bass pizzicato element going, but I'm going to bring in um I want something like Something like that. Chromatic movement. It's 
something to get the voices moving. Um, and what's going on? Something like that to keep the pace. Three, four. Again, space is being left really important. And we're going to use that, we're going to do that again. And this is how we structure the next act. Pretty much the third act, really. The third act, you would have more manic elements in here. Okay, so here I am after a brief intermission. I've I've actually added some stuff to this. Uh, not to be like secretive, you know, I didn't want to show you what I was doing type of stuff, just because uh, I opened up the project after my weekend and started just playing around and before I realized it I had written some extra bits and hadn't pressed record so here it is let me show you what I've done okay so I was moving to kind of like the second act thing I'm not actually going to go into act three I just want to show you this stuff here Quite like this. I'm just going to just move a couple of things just because I think they need that stop. Yes, there we go. Little cheeky stop. Remember, all these little stops help give the editor something fun to play with, a bit of ear candy. So, what did I do? What I wanted was something to give us a uh, an opening voice, the question, and then this is the answer. There we go. So you've got this question and answer section here, which I then extend with this question and this answer. Like a little conversation. Just like, what are you gonna have for dinner tonight? Hmm, think I'm gonna have a Wagamama's because it's super nice, that type of thing. Uh, and then we add those two together, that we've got the questions and answers kind of happening simultaneously. Like a lovely little chorus working together. Two people speaking, two people answering. Gonna have a Wagamama's because it's super nice, that type of thing. Okay, and then I wanted some things to allow us the sense of pace. So clicks and clocks and pizzicatos. Okay, they give us the sense of pace and something moving. And then obviously I've got this, this thing which gives us a sense of space. Oops, I think it gives us a sense of space. Here we go. When you when you add that with this stuff, you hear the importance of this sense of space, wrapping the question answer around, and then we've obviously got our, our ticks and clicks, giving it a sense of pace, and then we've got these hits. We've got a reverse snare, snare. And all I've done here is I've just cut the last phrase. And repeated it. That's all I've done. 
And this is how you do these kind of quirky, interesting string pieces. If I were to go to Act 3, I would start by sketching it using these hits, just saying, okay, they're probably going to happen every two now. I'm going to have it like this. Uh, and then I'm going to have a little break. And then this is going to happen every one for four. And there we go. I've got I've sketched out my third act without any kind of real thought. <laughs> I don't know, real thought. There's not a thought that needs to go into this. It's just... Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just knowledge of the, the templates, basically. Knowledge of the structure. Because that's all it needs. There we go. That's the end of Act 3. That's the end of my little Act 4. Where would we be there? We've got two minutes. That's more than enough. And then which ones have I got here? I'd probably have something pacey. So I might draw this in, actually, just because... No, I'll, I'll play in because I want to see how terrible the latency is. <laughs> I'm just coming up with small rhythmic chromatic ideas, basically. So... Oh, I didn't want it to be in, in eighths. Yep, sixteenths. Digga digga ding, 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 ding. One, two, three. There we go. Right, and then that is out of time. There we go. Something like that. And then I would keep this Bartok pizzicato going every... You know, maybe that's maybe I keep a question and answer going, but here I'm kind of going. Oh, hello. One, two, three, four. Something like that. <laughs> Help me! Something like that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, something like this. I mean, I'm, I, as much as I want to, I want to work it up. I'm not going to. Um, but what what I'm trying to show you is, I've sketched it out real quick, and I'm just going to think of it in terms of um, these blocks, and then I'm thinking of it in terms of a change. I could take this. I mean, that's one direction I could go. You know, kind of like the Danny Elfman style. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, it's almost the Blues Brothers, actually, isn't it? Uh, hello. Do, do, do. But then I'd probably, I'd say, let's double this stuff. Force legato, suckers. Um, and then I would make them, make them pay. Uh, just, just take these. There we go. But I wouldn't have that doing that because that sounds flabby and gross. There we go. Two, three, four. And then I take note that the fact that it's actually kind of dramatically. Boom, boom. What's the pattern? Oh, yep, D, E flat, D flat. Something like that. Oh, it's that way, isn't it? There we go. There we go. 
Oh, I've kept that top C. Quite like it though. And obviously we'd keep the clicks and clocks and things. And that actually sounds pretty good. I quite like this, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> I know I said cancel. I know I said I wouldn't do it. And then I would repeat this as a second phrase so that then that enables us to go repeat it there, a different, a slightly different phrase, and then return to it, something like that. And that's how we would, we, that's how one, one would shape this final act. That's quite cool, you know. I quite like it. I quite like it. So, uh, there's a few takeaways for you to dive into this. Uh, you know, again, the simplicity is so important here. Uh, relying on chromatics isn't entirely necessary, but chromatics are such an easy win for us to kind of move into the kind of like slightly off the wall, slightly quirky, because you're like, oh where did that note come from? You know, for instance, if I was like, even if I did. Yeah, so let's just, even just C, D, E, D. Just throwing that D flat in right at the end, or even just that E flat then, you go, ooh, ooh, something's, something weird's happened, even though I'm in major. You know, even when you've got a major chord sound, it that chromatic just goes something's cheeky. You know, oh, well, that's quite good. It's going between the major and the minor, all these tiny little chromatic movements—they really make a lot of difference. Now, the other thing is the question and answer. This call and response is really important because what it does is it gives space for the comedy, the quirkiness, the weird shots. Because what you're doing is you're going uh, like here. There's everything normal. I walk into the office, but everyone in the office is dead. I grab my sandwich, I eat my sandwich, drink my cup of coffee, look out the window, and there's a mermaid flying in the sky. It's two, it gives you two chances to state one thing and state another, both sonically and visually. So that's why it's really important. And again, these little stops. Equally important. The stops, again, where it's like, he looks out there, you know, walks into the office. Well, let's see that walk into the office thing. I'm just walking into the office. I'm holding my briefcase. Open the door. Oh my gosh. Everybody is dead. What do I do? Have my coffee. <laughs> you know, it's that type of thing. So those question and answer things are really, really important. The chromatic elements, just to give you that sense of like jaunty off the wall, Keep your instrument sounding close because especially when you're doing psychological stuff, it's important that the viewer feels that the music is is in their face. And that's why you will hear a lot of this type of stuff. It doesn't have to be, but these are the, the trends within this type of trailer music. Remember to create space with reverb. <sighs> like this one. Oh, I know why. It's because it's... Uh, there we go. It's got a delay on it. <laughs> Remember to create space. Because it paints that picture. You don't have to be really heavy-handed with the drum hits. Uh, I mean, I have kind of gone heavy-handed. Um, and you can sketch out your acts. You don't have to work slowly. I've got this video... Uh, which is just showing you how to sketch trailing music tracks really quickly using drag and drop samples like I did, but going into more detail. Uh, I hope you found this tutorial useful and interesting and fun and all that jazz that you want from a YouTube video, except 
no quick edits or, you know, hilarious camera faces because I don't have time for editing.